All right, so this is the Logitech G542X Plus. It launches back in 2022, and now in 2025, it is still one of Logitech's flagship gaming mice. Is this one still worth it picking up? Let's find out together. So clearly the first thing you notice about the G542X Plus is the shape. It's large, it's a nice and ergonomic mouse, and only at 106 grams. It's heavier than what most eSport focused mouses aim for now, which are usually around 60 to 70 grams, but the shape itself is excellent. It's a sculpture for comfort, and it works really well for pun grip and relaxed claw grip as well. If you've got a smaller hands, it might be a bit much, but for medium to large hands like mine, it's one of the most comfortable shapes out there. And even though it's heavier than a lot of the newer gaming mouse out there, the weight is completely balanced. It doesn't feel like it's dragging when you move it across the mount mass. Build quality is solid as well, no rattles, no flex, and even after some aggressive flicks and pressure tests, it stays quiet and firm. But okay, because moving towards the clicks, it uses Logitech Light Force hybrid switches. It's a combination of optical and mechanical switches designed to offer the speed and durability of optical while retaining the satisfaction feeling of a mechanical click. Why is that do that black click? And it really works. All clicks feel sharp and clean. There's a nice crisp tactile to Deng as well with no pre travel and a short satisfying post click response. I have tested over the past few weeks now and so far no double click issue, no inconsistency and no sign of degradation whatsoever. But now let's talk what really matters is the sensor because this is using the Logitech Hero 25K sensor. And while the 25,600 DPI number is mostly overkill, the real benefit here is precision and consistency. It tracks with zero acceleration, no smoothing, and no spin outs, even during fast flick. Maximum speed is 400 inches per second with a 40 gram acceleration limit. And in practical use, it never stutter or misses any input. Compared to newer sensors like the Razer Focus Pro 30K or Pixar 3395, it holds up surprisingly well. Maybe not quite as efficient and ultra low power level, but in terms of raw accuracy and being reliable, it's right up there. Now, one of the G542's main selling points have always been the button layout. You got 13 programmable buttons in total, excluding the familiar sniper button over here near your thumb. I actually really like it for Photoshop as well. But that sniper button is magnetically attached. So take it out and you can put it back in. It comes with a completely one as well, different shapes as well, all depending how you hold in your mouth. The squat wheel is worth mentioning too because as Logitech, this is the infinite wheel. It's metal, it's a smooth, and you can switch it between, as I said, your infinite mode and your toggle mode over here. And it got a very nice and satisfying clicky. But for productivity and web browsing, the free spinning mode is great, honestly. You can go from top of the page to the bottom of the page in just seconds. You can do the whole TikTok reels in seconds. Now into wireless performance, the G542X Plus use Logitech, light speed wireless connection and it's excellent. It's no lags whatsoever, zero noticeable lag, even in crowded 2.4 gigahertz environment. And battery life is solid too. You will get about 37 hours of use with the RGB because we do have RGB everywhere, baby. And around 130 hours with the light completely on. And if you got the Logitech power play mat, it's a mat that you plug, the mouse will actually charge like wirelessly through the bottom. So you actually never need to charge it and you got a mouse here forever. I don't own it personally, but if you invest into the Logitech ecosystem, it's actually a very nice upgrade. And the RGB lighting itself is super clean. It doesn't shine everywhere. You got eight zones for RGB strips all around the top, fully customizable through Logitech G Hub software. And the LifeX look good. 
decently bright without being over beaming. And the app itself is fine for basic setting and syncing with other Logitech gear that you may go around to complete your ecosystem and you can have all the custom animations going all around a little bit compared to something like the Razer Synaptic. So what about the downsides on this little one? Well, the way it's going to be an issue for people used to ultra light honeycomb styles at 106 gram is significantly heavier than models like the Razer Viper V2 Pro or that Lamsu Atlantics with hover around 55 to 60 grams. The sight may also be too much for play out with a little bit of smaller hands and those using fingertip grip as well. The scroll wheel while being well built can feel a little bit overly sensitive during fight pace moment and then, well, there's the price. At around 100 pounds right now, RRP was around 160 pounds. It's on the higher end for wireless gaming mounts you can find lighter, faster eSport mouse for less, but you won't get the same numbers of buttons and the same numbers in battery life. If you are someone who values versatile over extreme weight saving, this is still one of the best options out there. It's great for people who play a mix of FPS, MMOs, the strategy game, uh, even if you need the extra button for streaming, editing, or any productivity workflow. So if you want the lightest possible mouse for competitive shooters and nothing else, there are better options out there. Now, if you want something that is super reliable, that still performs on the top tier level in 2025, this one, it still makes a lot of sense. So that is for this one guys, thanks for watching. Just make sure you subscribe to the channel to get more in detail for our space reviews. And I will see you on the next one guys, adios.